All right, guys, it is Tuesday night at seven o'clock. And I know that you know who my guest is. He's been with the Vanderbilt program for the last six years on staff. He was all SEC. He was 2019 SEC legend. Of course, I've got number 91, Devon Hay with us. Hey, coach, how you doing tonight? I'm good, man. How about yourself, B? You doing all right? I'm doing great. I'm, I'm even better now that you and I are getting to have a chat. Oh, no, I can no tell you there are many Commodores out there watching tonight who have wanted to get you on here and have a good conversation. So thank you for making some time for us tonight. We really appreciate it, Javon. No, it, it's, it's a great honor. Appreciate you for uh, for having me. Absolutely. And I, guys, you all know who this man is and his importance in Vanderbilt football program history. But I'm going to give you a little bit of a of a lesson. Born in Jamaica, came over to the States, Dillard High School in South Florida. I'm still curious how he got up and coached Bobby Johnson. We're going to get to that in a minute. 2002 to 2004 starter, all SEC multiple years. Uh, SEC legend 2019, played in the league for seven years, drafted in 05 by the Carolina. Then he played with the Browns, Bucks, Titans, and Lions. Woo! This man has done a lot, and he still keeps doing so much more for our program. We owe him a huge debt of gratitude. I'm done with the intro. Javon, how did you get out of South Florida and make your way up to Vanderbilt? Yeah, I, I was back in 01. I had a um, an offer from Vandy. Uh, Nigel Seaman also had an offer from Vandy. So he decided he was going to take an OV, and we talked about it. And I was like, let's just go together and uh, came up here. Um, we, we, we loved it. Ray Perkins at the time, he was one of my hosts. Um, um, Coach McKenzie was one of my hosts, you know, as well. And uh, Matt Clay was. So I enjoyed it. It's, you know, being around Nashville, you know, it doesn't look like it does now, but it, which, you know, it's it's amazing. But, uh, you know, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the city, enjoyed the campus. Um, wanted to play, you know, big time football, wanted to play in, in the best conference. So came here, enjoyed it and, uh, and, and committed. So that's that's how I ended up here. Well, it was certainly Vanderbilt's game, but I know you had other opportunities and other offers. But was it was it the fact that you were able to play in the SEC? Was it was it the academics? Was there was there one particular thing, or was it just the whole package? It was it was, it was really like the the whole package. You know, I had a you know had an uh, offer from Auburn, but they wanted me to play center. Um, I was playing guard in high school, never played defense till I got to Vandy. So for me, I was just you know I just wanted to be able to play you know the best brand of football, but also to like, you know, being born in, you know, in Jamaica, um, dyslexic, stuttered, mm -hmm. um, an opportunity to get a, a degree in education from a place like, that, you know, like Vanderbilt, man, it, it was a blessing. So, you know, I figured, hey, you didn't have, I didn't have to settle. So go ahead and take care of football and go, go ahead and take care of, um, you know, academics and, you know, Vandy, Vandy fit best, you know. When you graduated high school, what was your height and weight at that time? And then when you got to Vanderbilt, had you put on any weight before you, you came to campus? Yeah, I was 6'2", 225. Yeah. So when I when I got done my um going into my sophomore year, that that uh, you know, a one year cycle, mm -hmm. um, came back at 275, you know, so my red shirt uh, freshman year. Wow. <laughs> wow, that's awesome. Everett Robinson said he doesn't even want to know the stories with those hosts of yours on your recruiting visit. But I, I'll tell you, I'm going to ask you for some stories because statute of limitations is <laughs> way up. I've already checked it with Candace and with Coach Lee. You're mm -hmm. free to share with whatever you want. <laughs> no, uh, no, man, they're, they're a great host, man. It's just, uh, you, know, you know, no, normally, man, you know, you, you're coming from high school. You don't know what to expect. And, you know, you, you get to a college atmosphere and not just a college atmosphere. You're in a city like Nashville. Like I said, it was 2001. Yeah. And it just opened my eyes. I was like, man, you know, I would love to. I'd love to be here. So, you know, um, there were great hosts, um, you know, had a lot of fun, man, like you said. Um, but, you know, I, I think one thing they did sell was like the opportunity to play in this conference against against the best. And I saw in a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of players back then, you know, they, they came from different areas and, mm -hmm. you know, they saw as an opportunity to better themselves, you know, long term. So I figured to go ahead and capitalize on it, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to welcome Scott O'Neill, who was a guest a few weeks ago. Everett, I need to get you on the show. Of course, guys, I've got Coach Javon Hay. He's in his sixth year. He came in with Coach Bobby Johnson, played for him, 
then came back after his pro career, was on the Coach Mason staff for a couple of years and stayed on with Coach Lee. And, and I want to I want to jump to Coach Lee, Team 3. You guys just finished spring ball. You just had your scrimmage. Uh, how do you feel in Team 3 going into this season, Javon, having weathered the last five seasons through COVID, through all of the transition from Coach Mason to Coach Lee, it seems like the team and the staff have really got their feet under them. But that's just from our view on the outside. How excited are you guys inside Magoogan for this team? Uh, extremely, extremely excited, man. You know, I literally was just talking to some of the, the young guys. You know, it was like Darren Algo and Issa uh, today. And these guys are in the building, the young guys in the building. We have more players in the building here. It's unreal. Like guys are enthused, getting multiple workouts, film session, taking care of their body. Um, you know, going into year three now, you know, we feel like, hey, man, this is this is going to be a pivotal time for us, you know, because now we we have we have, you know, basically two re two recruiting cycles. You know, I know the 23s will be here. Some of them are here already, but it, it's exciting, you know, and and. and you know, just to see, you know, the the, the foundational um, structure that we've put in and Coach, Coach Lee has put in to see that manifest itself right now with just the energy and guys actually putting in the real work is exciting. And the crazy, crazy thing about it, you know, I see a backdrop right there. And if you go outside right here by the stall walk, it doesn't look like it, mm -hmm. it, 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 it has over the years. I mean, there's there's real excitement, you know, the United, uh, Vandy United. I mean, there's, there's construction going on now and it's just, to be honest with you, it's just a great time. You know, and I, I know our bowling team just, I mean, they yeah. just won another national championship, you know, coach Stackhouse and, and basketball has done well, you know, baseball is rolling. So it's, a, it's just a great time. And for us, we see it as a time where, you know, Vanderbilt is in a good place and, you know, we just got to make sure we continue to do our part you know, here in, uh, in football. You know, I, I've been saying now for a number of months, if I'm an if I'm an eighth, ninth, tenth grader, eleventh grader athlete, whatever sport, and I want and I'm serious about Vanderbilt, I've got to be as excited about what I'm seeing on campus as you can be anywhere in the country right now. Yep. It is it's a, it is an exciting time. I want to welcome Clint Small. Javon, one of the things I was at that ETSU game a couple of years ago, terrible game. I was at the Hawaii game, awesome game. But what I have seen over the last couple of seasons with Coach Lee is so much more athleticism. And the biggest thing that I have, I kind of pinpoint to, there is a great picture that I stole off the internet and I posted in our group. There is a, I'm going to call it a gang tackle of the Kentucky ball carrier where there's eight Commodores making the tackle, including three of your guys. And it just showed everybody swarms to the ball on y'all side of, of the, the, the line of scrimmage. Talk a little bit about that enthusiasm on the defense, because it really is showing so much more than in years past. Yeah, you know, we, 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 we focus on, man, getting, you know, wherever the ball is, we are trying to get as many hats to the ball. And if you're not to the ball, you know, at the end of a play, you're wrong. You're totally wrong. And, uh, you know, Coach Howell, our defensive coordinator, man, he's 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 huge on that. And, you know, the guys are buying in. Of course, you know, we're, we're working extremely hard in practice, you know, pursuit drills and tire them out before they start practicing to get them to fight through. But at the end of the day, you know, I, I think for our guys, it's like the more we're able to see that, the more we're able to get that on, 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 on film, the guys, you know, could start seeing like, hey, man, it, this is effective. You know, so the guys have bought in and we're going to continue. I mean, we're going to continue, continue pushing that. Um, you know, you, you mentioned earlier, you know, we're, we're, we're longer, we're bigger, we're stronger, we're faster. And, you know, that that's that's how we believe. Right. We will continue building this program, get this program to where we know we, we will eventually you know, take it. And I'm going to in, in just a minute, we're going to get back to your story. But while we're on this line. And I'm not asking you to be critical of Coach Mason or his staff or his time, but you're one of those who stayed on and have been through the transition. But here's my, my question to you, Javon, is it was reported that we had the least number of guys leave in the transfer portal, and we brought in the least number of, of transfer players. 
And you can read into it however you want, but the way I read into it is that the message that's being established inside McGugan by Coach Lee and you guys on the staff, it must be resonating with the guys on, on the roster. What do you see inside McGugan that is showing to you that these guys really are buying into this uh, team concept and what Coach Lee is trying to establish? You know, I, 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 you know, I, th I think for us, it's like, you know, it's like the message that Ken Seals is, is a perfect example of what he said, I think, a couple of weeks ago. Like, mm -hmm. you know, he, he, he believes in what we're doing. And for us, you know, we're a developmental program, right? We're going to recruit you, right? We will recruit high school young men. That's going to be the foundation, right? And we're going to pour into you. When things don't look look right, we're going to keep working with you, right? We're, we are going to be here for you. So at the end of the day, right, we want to also, you know, for us, we talk about developing, right? We, we not saying, we, you know, we won't ever touch transfers because we, we've, we've touched a few transfers, but we believe, right, our success is going to be recruiting high school young men, right, and developing both on and off the field. You know, so for us, that's going to be our, 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 our recipe for success. We, we won't move off of that, you know, and I, I think what happened is um, we played a lot of young guys, you know, last year we play them early. So I think when young men see that, they're like, well, you know what, I could actually go there. They're going to stick, you know, stick with me. They're, they're, they're going to stay with me in the fight. And also they're going to give you a chance to, you know, perform, you know, on, on Saturdays, you know, early. So for us, I, I, I think when, when young men see that and when people on the outside see that, they say, you know what, this could be a recipe for success. And, and we, we believe that, and we're going to stay true to who we are. You know, it's such a, it's such a comfort to football alums to see such stability. I know that you, you lost only coach McKenzie off the staff this past year, but that's rare that everybody stays together for a third year. But I also have seen that it's very important to coach Lee for football alums to come by and to, to watch practice, interact, interact with the current roster. Were you there last month when Chris Kraus, one of my former teammates, came and spoke to the team? Yes, yes. How impactful was Chris's message that day? It, it, it was huge. You know, it, it, he just wanted to tell us, you know, tell us that he's he's with us. He's supporting us. We 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 have this the support. And you know, I think Coach Lee's one, one of his big thing is you know, uh, you know this this thing is. This thing is is about the star V, you know, those who've come before us, those who are here and those who will eventually come, you know, after us. So at the end of the day, it's like it's it's an open door policy. Come back. We're trying to reel everybody back in who, who have met, you know, maybe it felt like, you know, the, the program really didn't, you know, want to invest in them. Like it's open door policy. So you see a lot of a lot of former players just around here. You see, I mean, the, the energy the level of support is it's it's man it it, it it warms your heart it does it does man because at the end of the day we do have support you know and, and i think for us we just got to continue as a program just keep making sure those doors are open just from a personal standpoint i came up a few weeks ago to watch the georgia baseball series i caught ben got me an hour with coach lee on that friday afternoon he had 10 things going on at once but he made an hour for me just to talk and i really appreciated that and that any alums can just get in touch with coach, but I, I want to, Javon, I want to kind of put that on pause because we're really, I want to talk about you uh, in, in our remaining time because your journey is just so fascinating to me. I want to, I want to go back to a little bit, if you, if you will, do you know the, I know that you were born in, in Jamaica and your family made it over to, to South Florida when you were very young. Do you recall any life uh, prior to moving to the States? Or were you too young to really remember that life? No, I remember it. No, I remember it like it was yesterday. Uh, just, you know, it, it, open doors, doors always open, no one locked the doors, um, having to mop mop the floor, um, having to buff the floor with, a, with basically a coconut, red um, um, polish, mm -hmm. sweeping outside, dirt. We using a stick and leaves as a broom, mm -hmm. outhouse, coal showers outside, zinc roof, no running water, you know, boiling your water. Um, a lot of times, you know, grabbing the chickens, taking it, you know, do what you got to do with them to put them in a the pot. 
the goats, the cows, you name it, no shoes, you know, running around for hours, hours at a time. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, glass on your feet. It's just, it was just wide open. I mean, it was wide, wide open. <laughs> Every, everybody seems to live right next to each other. Mm -hmm. Um, and like you said, man, that's, that's, I mean, I was born, born, born and raised. Uh, I came, I actually, um, when I left Jamaica, when I was six, I went to Jersey for six years, then went to Fort Lauderdale. Yeah. So I, I remember that. I mean, like, like it was yesterday and, you know, also too, it's, it's when I just, you know, I had a bad, bad stuttering problem mm -hmm. and struggled in school. And like I said, I was dealing with dyslexia. didn't know at the time, mm -hmm. you know, so um, first time seeing like a, a building, like, past the typical house one-story house was when i came to jersey you know wow. so, um never been on an airplane like it's 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 you it know was a whole, it was a whole culture oh uh, change everything but but javon now that you're a father of four beautiful girls i want to know do you get the eye rolls when you talk about jamaica do you get fascination by the kids are they tired of your stories or are they still eating up those stories? No, no stories, man. I, I, I don't do too much stories. Um, we are, we are going to go back to Jamaica as a family because at the end of the day, they, they're, they're Jamaican as well. Yeah. I, yeah. I, do, I do want to bring them back and to show them where, you know, this is oh. where it all started. And um, I mean, it's just, they, they, they're, they're excited. They, they, they can't wait to go see where, uh, you know, daddy's from. Oh, we got oh, we got a bunch of Commodores rolling in. We got OJ Fleming. We got Primetime Sims in the house. Hey, Darius. We got Russell Nicole in the house, and, if, and a few others have already rolled through. Of course, I've got Coach Javon Hay making his way from Jamaica to Jersey. You're right, Everett. I bet going from Jamaica to Jersey was an experience, and then going to South Florida was another, just again, a culture change of significance. But that's where you you grew up with mainly – I assume middle school and high school. And when you're coming up through Dillard High School, there were so many athletes that come through that program. Who were some of the others who were about your age who made it maybe into the pros or had significant college careers? Uh, we had Chris Gamble in the end of going to Ohio State. Matthias Askew, he went to, um, he went to uh, Michigan State. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it, it, it's count uh Stanley McGlover. He ended up going to uh Auburn. So we had we 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 had we, we had some some guys. Josh Shaw, he ended up going to Michigan State. So I think at the time there was a point uh a few years, I mean it was a few years back. I think we were like top 10 in mm -hmm. in most guys in the NFL from from a high school. Wow. It's kind of changed now, but like we 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 had we've had some guys, you know. Now you've been in Nashville for a number of years now, but did it take you a minute to get adjusted to the Nashville humidity as opposed to what you were growing up with or in South Florida, or did that come pretty easily for you? No, it, 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 it took a minute because if you look at it, like I'm in Fort Lauderdale and I know I'm not right on the beach, but the beach is not far. Yeah. So, you know, we get a good breeze mm -hmm. um, where you come up here, that thing. Ain't no breeze, so it was it was, a, it was a different type of heat now, you know. Um, you know, those guys from up north, Chicago, Michigan, wherever they are from up there, it does take them a bit to, to get adjusted. Dwayne Jones says to tell you, Lowe, he's got a question for you. Was Buddy Martin one of your assistant coaches in high school? But, oh, gosh, you know, you put me on the spot. I'm not. Does that name ring a bell? No, I, 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 I'm, I'm 40, man. I'm about to be 41. That's all right. Dwayne, give us some context, bud. Mm -hmm. um, Javon, I want to talk about the transition to Vanderbilt academics, which we all know is no joke. And you beautifully, I read your book, uh, Bigger Than Me, and it tells your story of dyslexia. But I'm not, it's not for me to tell, it's for you to tell. But I want to talk about that transition from Dillard to Vanderbilt and you dealing with the condition and trying to just figure out your way academically and the toughest school in the sec yeah you know so grew up with this dyslexia still like i said i'm still dyslexic um struggled early but i end up when i left high school i was actually an honor roll student so i was an honor roll and i had a, i had a 4.5 on a 4 row scale so i took you know, like wow. i said honors classes but um everything about me i did poorly on my uh on my sat i mean i just i it, it was bad i don't even want to give you it was just <laughs> i didn't reach a thousand it was it was bad yeah. But 
what happened was, so I struggle with time, like uh, time, you know, tests that are, uh, that have time limit on it. Because normally like if, let's say for instance, like I have a question and there's four options, mm-hmm. I would have to read the question, look at the, look at the, op- the first option, mm-hmm. read the question, look at the second option. I have to do that. So by the time like everyone else is halfway through, I'm literally might be 10 questions. So, um, so that's why I struggle with things like that. Um, but when I, when I came to Vandy, I mean, Vandy, Vandy, Vandy was, Vandy was a tough, tough, um, it was a challenge early. Uh, didn't start off well, but I ended up, you know, right in the ship. I ended up leaving here with a two, four, but it's, it was still what I struggled the most with was here was, um, you know, test that dealt with time. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, like I said, I found a way to become a uh, honor student kind of came here my, my first semester trying to navigate it, um, had all the support in the world, but, you know, I, I didn't have any accommodations or anything like that. You know, back then, like the word dyslexia, not too many people truly on, on, truly understood what it was, mm-hmm. you know, so, and I tell people all the time, I still count on my fingers. Um, like when I read, I, I literally go for like word for word and it's not slow, but I'm always like, I found a way to like, gl- you know, glimpse at a few words before. Um, it's like when I go read to like the youth, I read the book before because I don't want to, I don't want to mess up the word, you know, and I tell people all the time, it's like, so part of being dyslexic with me was like, I was reading a book years ago to these um, elementary kids and um, it was whatever it was, it was blase, blase, red Mm rest. And for me, I I broke it down as R-E-D, right? R-E-S-S, red rest. Mm-hmm. And I said it and the kids looked at me like, huh? It was actually redress. Right, right. So that's when I learned like, okay, if I'm gonna read to these young men and young women, it like I'm going to make sure I read the book prior. So every time I do that, I ask for the book. And so you just find ways to deal with it. And, you know, I tell people all the time, like I'm dyslexic, man. I'm proud. I'm proud of it. And um, I, I like to feel like, you know, I've, I've, I've done some great things in my life. So like, it, it's not a hindrance. Well, you know, one of, I think, one of the beautiful things that you have done is the fact that you put it in writing to share with others, Mm -hmm. because I'm sure you've, you've heard countless stories of people who have the same uh, medical condition, but are afraid to share it or afraid to deal with it. I read the book and, and frankly, it, it made me cry at times not from a sadness standpoint, but from your courage standpoint. And we can talk about you playing in the NFL all along in SEC. That's not the toughness that we're talking about. So thank you for writing that book. But here's a real good question from OJ. How did you manage to learn and, and digest the playbook at Vanderbilt? Oh, man. Okay, so now, you know, you're going from high school to college, totally different, you know. So um, I'm a visual learner, you know, mm-hmm. so – it, it was just times I would have to go up there and draw the plays, mm-hmm. um, write down what my, you know, each assignment I have. Um, I think the hardest part early was like when there was an adjustment within the play, mm-hmm. like now your head's spinning because you got to think now I never, I played O-line in high school for two years. Then I start playing football to my junior year in high school. And when I came here, I was, a, I was a linebacker mm-hmm. and I tore my shoulder up in, in a training camp practice. And then the next year, when uh, Coach uh, Johnson came and Coach Turner, they said they were going to move me to defensive end. So I've never played defense ever, you know. So that in itself was a, a challenge. But the playbook, I just I, I just dug in. So now you know where it, it, you okay. So you know, like when you get a play and they'll give you the diagrams and the coach will tell you what to do. And then there's a writing for <laughs> each assignment. I used to read. I used to actually read that. You know. Oh yeah, I, I read every every word and and I just took that part and put it aside and that's that's how i be honest with you, i learned i learned the playbook well i, I guess i was, was reteach myself why, mm-hmm. well i was so, going to say maybe did you reinforce that with your film study being able to watch because you said you were a visual learner mm-hmm, I suspect mm-hmm, that mm-hmm, complemented mm-hmm. your ability to to digest the assignment oh yeah always and then also too so like i'm a big I'm a big, I'm a big believer in walkthroughs, especially for myself. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, we can sit here and you can tell me exactly what I got to do, but walking through is is like, uh, 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 that's how, that's the one of the best ways I learned as well. Mm-hmm. You know, so yes, it's, it's good to put on the board. It's good to see it on paper, but actually walking, walking through it and as well and explain the process mm-hmm. as I, you know, as we are walking through mm-hmm. and, you know, and, 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 and that was, um you know, I, I think, 
once I got that down, you know, and I found my my ways, because everybody learns different. Every everybody does. You know, as as and I'm not I'm never going to ask you to name names, but if you had other players side up to you and say, "I learned the same way," or no, I, yeah. oh, I, oh, yeah, I have dyslexia. Oh yeah, I've, I've I've had teammates that 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 deal with the same you know the same way, um, and we kind of have almost like the same process. You know, I I just think for like you'd be amazed how many people struggle with that mm -hmm. and it's just like not knowing and maybe people look at you different it's like well, one of my good friends daughter ended up going to college and she was a straight a student and he tested her like you know her, her senior year and she found out she was dyslexic he's like javon what do you want me to do i was like nothing <laughs> he's a straight a student just like you know now like it is what it is you know like yeah. no, no need to panic guys i've got javon hey we're having a fantastic conversation and like our Commodores are getting smoked right now by Indiana State. They're down five nothing in the fifth. So hopefully they'll make their way back. Indiana State's no joke. We got DC Crosby in the house. Thank you for coming on board with Javon. I want to go back to your freshman year and you're getting acclimated academically. You're getting acclimated athletically. Who's ahead of you in the depth chart? Who are you trying to to compete against for Either I don't know if you ended up being redshirted that first year or if you got some playing time, but who's ahead of you already with the program? Well, it's my story is a little different because remember I told you I tore my shoulder up when right. I was a linebacker and um, tore my shoulder up. So I'm in the Olympic weight room the following year. Mm -hmm. I'm doing box jumps and Coach Turner walks in. And he was mm -hmm. like, hey, Javon. Like, I heard you, you know, you're playing linebacker. He's like, we're stacked the linebacker. <laughs> he was like, you know, Moses, if you get all of them were there. Yeah. And, you know, uh, golf was on his way, you know, I think two years later. But he was like, yeah, you know, we're, we're really set at linebacker. He's like, I need a DN. He was like, do you want to compete at linebacker? Start at DN. And I jumped off the <laughs> the box jump and shook his hand and said, DN. So literally, I, that's literally how I started playing DN. So they penciled me in as, as the first and left in. So that, that was my it red didn't shirt. leave. No. It didn't leave that spot for no. three years. No. So that was my red shirt freshman year. Like yeah. I said, so I came in on the Woody. So we had all different guys. And a lot of those guys were, were seniors, you know, so at the end of the day. So like when Coach Johnson came in, like it, it was a fresh start. And and your teammates thought so highly of you. You were named captain for two years. Now, were, are you the type of, of leader who is – a quiet example leading leader, or are you one of those, and forgive me for saying this, you're a rah-rah, you get them pumped up by letting them hear your voice. What was your your uh, preferred way to, to be a leader amongst the team? Uh, it was, you, you, you're going to hear, you're going to hear my voice. Like I, I didn't. Oh, I knew the answer to that. I just wanted to hear you yeah, say it. <laughs> you, you're going to, you're going to hear my voice. Um, You know, I, I, it's like when I came here, you know, I, I, I came here for a reason, you know, I wanted, um, Want to go to the NFL, but also wanted, you know, to be part of something just magical here at Vandy. And I've always, you know, you know, believed that, you know, my voice was going to be powerful. Um, you know, sometimes it maybe rub people the wrong way, but you know, I I wanted much more for for us. I wanted much more for myself as well. You know, so I I, I was that type of guy. Got emotional, you know, you know. Um, but I I think I I did I did do a good job of coming back in the uh, getting back to the middle. But you, you, you were going to hear me. And, you know, Coach Howard says it all this time, you know, those who are great communicators, you know, um, those who could talk the most in, like in football are well conditioned. And I, I think part of that was like I, I was always on top of my condition. So I figured, you know, talking a little smack or whatever wasn't going to hurt because I wasn't going to get tired, you know. But um, as a coach, a little different now, you know, um, Coach Lee has kind of like helped groom me into, you know, more calm you know, take in information, process it, gather stuff from the guys. Like I'm in a box now, you know, on game day. So it's like, it, I, it's a totally different view. First time ever being in a box. So I've, uh, I've evolved as a coach, you know. So, yeah, but you've got all that energy. How do you get oh, that energy out on game day? It's, it's, it's there. I don't, I don't, I don't do it on game day. I don't, it's, it's all throughout the week. I tell my guys all the time, like when we get to Thursday, kind of tamp it down a little bit Friday, you know, hey, it's it's in your hands. Show me what you know. Like, show me you're ready to go. And Saturday is your day. Like, I, that's your day. It's time. It's time to go to work. So, 
And, you know, at first I've never done it. So I was thinking that I had to be that guy. And, and then I realized, man, I, I, I'm much more effective as a coach, mm-hmm. just being up in, in the box, being able to see things and, you know, deliver a calm message to, to our guys, you know, so. Um, and I bet, Javon, I don't mean to interrupt you, but I bet just what you just said, you delivering that calm message gives them that confidence that they already know they have. You just reinforce it. Oh, yeah. And I can think of nothing. You take us take us into the box. Who are you actually communicating with? A coach on the field or directly yes. with some of the players? Uh, yes, so, some of everybody. Like you know, Coach Howell, you know, is up there and everything. And uh, Coach Black's on the field, so being able to communicate with him and Coach Josh Smith, who played here at Vandy, right. he's there. Right. So like, um, we're always communicating. You know, so it's 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 just a different. It's 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 crazy because like when you when you're in a box you kind of see things and mm-hmm. you get the play and then you start playing the play through your head and you see it and you know right then boom so now instead of me being on the field I see it write down my notes boom, boom after the series is done I'm able to jot down hey this is what we need and it's it, it's it's straight right to the point right mm-hmm. so um, it's it's pretty it's pretty cool my wife has seen me sometimes in the box <laughs> and she's like man you look calm I'm like of course she's like hey man you. You're chewing the heck out that gum too, but I'm like, yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm locked in, you know. But it, it has changed, and like I said, so that I still have that passion. Like you yeah. said, you know, at the end of the day, I don't want to take away from the guys on Saturday. It's, it's their, it's their day. So all that raw, raw, you get a little bit more of that during the week. Mm-hmm. But then as that thing, you know, tampers off, man. It's, it's, it's about our guys. It's time for them to perform. It's Coach A. I, I don't, I don't, I don't play anymore. It's, it, it's. Right. You turn time. it over to the guys to then perform. I want to welcome Chris Griffin. I hate to keep going back and forth, but things just kind of are triggered in my head. Javon, it was was you was your shoulder injury? Was that your lowest point as an athlete at, at Vanderbilt? Was that the low point for you, or was there something else that that from a confidence standpoint, from an emotional standpoint, that was more difficult for you? Nah, I mean. It, it was, you know, I, I wouldn't say it was low because, you know, got some delivered, you know, some good news that day before it happened. It was uh, Robert Dinwiddie, <laughs> you know, um, B-Sweet, uh, our receiver, went to tackle him and grabbed the one hand and Dinwiddie came and hit me from the back and he came out. I tried to play through it, put on a brace, but it kept on popping out. Um, I just, I, I it wasn't low, but my expectation, we all do. Oh my gosh, you're going to come on the scene and take college football by storm. And the injury happened. So, you know, they, they redshirted me. And, um, I would, I would say maybe my second year, mm-hmm. like was a little bit maybe tougher because the success you thought I, I thought I was going to have my fresh freshman year and the start off real slow, my, my redshirt freshman year. Mm-hmm. And part of it was like, when guys used to grab me, this wasn't, I mean, it's just, it was different. I've never felt strength like that in my life, <laughs> you know? And it's like, man, I am, I am not ready yet. And I think maybe that frustration came there mm-hmm. that man, I'm not physically up to par yet. Yeah. I'm starting, but not, not being effective. You know, I think, I think that was, I wasn't low, but it was, it, it, it used to get to me early. Well, let's, let's now flip that on its head. Take us to the apex, take us to the best, of your emotions playing for Vanderbilt? Ah, I mean, it's, um, I would say this, when, when I, when I would go to sleep Friday night Mm -hmm. and I used to play the game out all, all throughout the week, I knew exactly. I mean, literally, and people say, well, and if you, if you look at it a lot, you hear a lot of pro athletes talk about this. Now they've literally played the game. They know how it's going to go. Every situation they, they try to think of. When I used to rest my head Saturday, uh, Friday nights, I already knew what was going to happen. Seriously on Saturday, mm-hmm. I already knew. So it, it, it was, it was just a matter of time for that, for that first kickoff. Mm-hmm. And now stronger, faster, more athletic, Got got more tools in my toolbox. Like it went from like, hey, you know what? One day is like, oh, you're going to have to deal mm-hmm. with me. You're going to have to deal with the defense. You're going to have to deal with the Commodores today. And that that's that 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 was when I think everything felt good. When you know you're like, hey, you know what? Like I'm not just out here surviving. I'm actually thriving. Right. 
Well, that, that's what I was going to say. You know, is to be a successful athlete, regardless of your sport, you have to have confidence, yep. confidence in your ability, not just to compete, but to be able to, to win, to accomplish your goals. And do you remember ever having like a defining moment for you at Vanderbilt that, that showed that you're not just surviving out here, as you said, but now you're starting to thrive. The game maybe slows down a little bit at some point. You're now reacting as an athlete, not just having to process everything. Was there ever a specific moment, like a practice or a game or something that you did that just kind of clicked with you? It, 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 it was, you know, I think it was two things. It was like, um, I used to say it all the time, you know, um, having Chris Williams and Justin mm -hmm. Geisinger, like two NFL guys, mm -hmm. like every day. So if you go on the right side, mm -hmm. there goes guys. If you go on the left side, there goes Chris. And man, sharp iron, you know, iron sharp iron. And yeah. it was a it was a daily battle. Mm -hmm. Guys, you know, guys was a real good athlete, but guys were strong, like strong, strong. Chris, big, athletic, quick on his feet talks a lot of smack so i got to deal with the guy over there that talks a lot of smack and then the yeah. guy and guys don't say anything yeah. so that just got you better day in day out and it prepared me for on, on saturdays because i'm like i'm probably not going to get it, i'm probably not going to get a better look yeah right on, on saturday than seeing two guys who were pro guys who actually went to the nfl got drafted so but i, I would say maybe it was the tcu game we went down to tcu i forgot where they were ranked they were ranked top 25 or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I, I, I would to this day is probably my greatest game I've ever had. And I was zoned, zoned in the whole time. And there was stuff first at career interception. Like I saw everything before it happened. And it was almost one of those. I tell, so I try to tell our guys like, there's going to be moments in your life as a football player, yeah. when you become a really good football player. You're going to get into situations where you like, I never want to get out of the zone. Like, I don't even want, I, I don't, I want to find a way to stay on this field because I don't even want to, leave the field because I'm in the zone and I would say that TCU game but also too now we play them hard and we came up short and that hurt that, yeah. that 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 hurt because I think the team just grinded we went down there mm -hmm. I think they were undefeated whatever I think they were top 10 or whatever yeah. but I think that TCU game was like yeah you know what actually actually I could actually do this yeah you were a cheat code that day yeah, it, 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 yeah, it, yeah I, I felt it, and you know, it, it, and I'm not gonna go into numbers, but it was, yeah, it, was, it never get, it never came close to that again. Now you take that experience, you then take your six or, or seven years in the pros, and now you're grooming the next generation of players, whether they play on the next level or not. You're trying to make them the very best of men, of athletes that you can. What is it that from those experience that you as a coach now you're trying to translate to those those guys? I know they, you know, much like our children, when you tell them stories from childhood, they, you know, they know the stories, they roll their eyes. But these guys, they're learning from you, a former professional football player who now has many years of, of being an SEC coach. How do you instill that? How do you get that into the modern athlete's head so that they, they really buy into that? I, first of all, I respect this generation. We're in 2023. So like, this is not 2001. Like uh, that's, yeah. that's when I play. Like I, I coach now. So I, I respect this generation. I respect what they're going through. It's the different times. Mm -hmm. But so the one thing I, I try my best is to do is understand this is their moment. Mm -hmm. They go through a different, you know, challenges than, than I did back in 01. Right. But the one thing, I always try to instill with them was I wanted to play in the NFL, right? Mm -hmm. That was a goal. I didn't think about that goal every day. I didn't, I didn't believe that. Um, I did my, my number one thing when I woke up, thank the Lord for waking me up. And before my feet hit the ground, I'm like, how can I find a way today to be a better football player? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. I want to be a good human. Yeah, I want to take your, I mean, how before my feet hit the ground, what am I going to do today? How, who am I going to outwork today to make sure at the end of this thing, I get to the NFL. So what I try to tell our guys is, hey man, having an NFL goal is great. I'm, I'm never, but it's, it's about work, work, build your craft, right? You know, we talk about holistic development here, 
right? Mm -hmm. Five component, mind, body, spirit, skill, bond, mm -hmm. right? That's what we do. So don't worry about the NFL. If we work on those components, if we, if we make those better, right? Mm -hmm. The NFL will be there because it ain't, it's not going anywhere. But so instead of us saying, hey, hey man, we're waking up every day. I got to go to the NFL. Gotta, no, no. I got to become a better route runner. I got to work on my get off. Got to work on my hands. Got to work on my eyes, right? Got to be able to bend, work on flexibility, change the direction, better strike, things like that. That's what, that will eventually lead to the NFL, you know? So that's why I try to encourage our guys. Like that will never change. I don't care if that's 2001, 2023, it'll be two, 2000, you know, 27, five one day. Yeah. That won't change with me. Like let's work on becoming a better football player and like lead the NFL to itself because that in itself is so hard to get to. But at the end of the day, when you, when, 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 when you turn in, right. When you, when you push everything in the middle of the table and it's time for you to say, man, you know what, did I turn in a good college resume? It, yes. It, 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 I worked hard, developed my skill set, performed well on Saturdays. And let's see what the NFL says. It's those building blocks. It's those just, they all add up and it's your, I understand, at least I think I understand that you've always got, if you're, if you're one of those guys who wants to play in the league or professionally, sure, that, that is your long-term goal. But you can't let that paralyze your ability to get better every day. Mm -hmm. And, oh gosh, I want to, we got a bunch of Commodores. We got Joe Peeble, say hey, Joe P. We got Gary Kimball. We got Chris Griffin, Clint Small, DC Crosby, a couple other guys. Of course, we're talking with coach Javon Hay. And, and Javon, I, I want to talk about that time period where your career with Coach Johnson and, and at Vanderbilt was coming to a close. You've got the NFL draft in 05 coming up. And did you stay in Nashville to prepare for the draft? Take us a little bit through that pre-draft, post-senior season, but before the spring draft. Where were you to do your training and preparation work? Yeah, so I decided to go um, to leave town. I had an agent. Um, he, he had a, a whole bunch of other clients. So I went to Tempe, Arizona mm -hmm. and I played uh, to train. And um, I mean, there was, oh gosh, I think that facility had eight to 10 first rounders. Wow. Yeah, he had like, um, we had Ronnie Brown, Cadillac. Um, I mean, there was those few others I mean Jamal Brown like a whole bunch of guys it was like eight to ten first rounders so I went out there for a couple months mm -hmm. and locked in I mean it was it was it was it was, it was, it was good times um you, you got to be around some hungry hungry guys uh Barrett I think yeah Barrett Rude was out there too you know who I played with in Tampa so it was, it was about it was about 30 I want to say 30 guys out there at, at what point were you contacted if at all by Carolina before they drafted you and did you know you were going when you went? No, um, at the time. So at the time, Tampa, Carolina, I think Carolina just came off the Super Bowl or a year or two off, mm -hmm. you know, when they played the Patriots. Mm -hmm. And their D-line was phenomenal. Oh, my gosh, phenomenal, phenomenal. Brinson Buckner, um, Chris Jenkins, Julius Peppers, Al Wallace, Mike Rucker. No way. And then at the time, so Tampa, you know, Tampa has, you know, Tampa's down there with Booger. Simeon Rice, the Chris Hovans, Greg Spires. So, like, in your head, you're like, nah. So, Carolina would come up every time. I'm like, there's no way. Like, keep keep it moving. Tampa comes, no way. Mm -hmm. And I think it was, I think their Erica was like 704. And um, so, take it back. So, now, when I get done with the combine, you, you know, saw one projection last 31st to the Steelers and People say, oh, there's no way you're going to make it past the second or third. And day one goes by, <laughs> man, start crying. I mean, it's crying mad at the world, like um, crazy. Next day comes, you're like, all right, here we go, here we go. So you go from being mad to like anxious, like, oh, my God, and start getting nervous now. You're like, oh, my gosh, I'm going to go undrafted. And when they call, it was like, oh, my gosh, like started crying. First time I ever cried in front of my dad, like literally as a grown man or, or a teenager um held him cried in his arm man because they went from like being mad to like oh my gosh like a childhood dream like has come through you know um so it, it, was, it was a great time 
you are the one percent of the one percent. Mm-hmm. And what I mean by that, not just moving from Jamaica to the states and then making it into SEC and that great career and then getting drafted, but then you played for seven seasons. And the average career has got to be two to three years. So I'm, I'm not asking you for your secret sauce, but what was it that allowed you to stay in the league as long as that you, that you did? I mean, I, 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 I would say, you know, I, I performed. There, there, was, there was about a four or five year span. Like I was, I was locked in, started multiple games, started for a couple of seasons straight. Um, Love the game, man. I always try to find a way to um, work on my game. You know, a lot of guys, you know, in the off season when they go, they go all over the place. Like I would come back every opportunity. I came back to Nashville, and literally, I like there's a hill right, over, like below your right shoulder, right there. I'm looking at your picture. I ran those hills and the sand pit. I did that. So like, I, I call it back to the basics, you know. And um, that's what I do. So Yo Gotti, Yo Gotti, a rapper from Memphis, he has a song called "Back to the Basics," and like. I still do it to this now. The same little workouts I used to do, you know, when in college or when I was in the NFL on those fields, that's what I do now. So I would always just come back to the basics and say, you know what, I got to treat this as a new year, you know, um, a contract, you know, okay. Yeah. Contracts, a contract, but like, you're not guaranteed, you know, um, the next year. So every year I got, it, it was, it was a blessing. And, you know, the cool part about it. Um, so towards my last year in Tampa, my seventh year, I got a contract extension for like two years. So my goal, I told my agent, I was going to give him 13 and I, you know, fell short a little bit, but um, I got a contract extension Mm -hmm. to get to uh, eight or nine. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it just, it it wasn't, it wasn't, I didn't feel it. And I told him, give me a couple of days. And I called him and I was like, I'm done. Like I'm, I'm, I'm done. But now does it mean I would have seen played through eight or nine? I don't know, but it felt good that, I was able to call it quits on my terms. Well, I was getting ready to say most athletes can't or don't have that power. Mm -hmm. Injury, eligibility, getting cut, a a whole bunch of reasons. But the fact that you were able to call your shot and you knew in your heart and in your mind and maybe with your family or whomever at the time, you just knew it was time. But that, that, the 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 fire is still there always you're an athlete you've always been that way but the fact that you recognized it because you could have gotten hurt you could have you know you someone else could have gotten hurt because your passion may not have been there but one I applaud that because that's so difficult I would think I've never been in your shoes but as an athlete when you don't get to call it when someone else calls it for you that that's tough but what folks may not know guys Did you know that Javon came back in 07 and got his degree from Vanderbilt while he's in the pros? And that in and of itself deserves an applause. That HOD uh, degree, I mean, you could have easily have just said, well, you know, maybe I'll get it in 10 years or whatever. But did you always come back to Nashville in the off seasons? Every off season, every. So, you know, as much as you moved around, it was almost military. You're almost like you were in the military during the season. I guess you lived in the hometown uh, of of your team at the time, but uh, wow, coming back each year. Tell you how special this place was. So when I get here, oh one, I was like, oh, this is home for life. Mm-hmm. So it was. I want to say it was two thousand seven. It was when the Steelers played the Cardinals, mm-hmm. the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. So like, I always told myself like, I would never go to Super Bowl. I've never been to the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. So you imagine now, the Super Bowl's in Tampa. I'm playing for the Bucks. Mm-hmm. I have a, um, you know, you got the whole week and, and whatever. Mm-hmm. Think about this now. Mm-hmm. It's in Tampa. So I had a, uh, I had a charity event to go read to some uh, 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 um, elementary uh, mm-hmm. students. So I read to the elementary students. My bags are packed. Right after I get done, guess where I go? Fly back to Nashville. To the 615. 100%. So like, and the Super Bowl is like literally in the backyard of the, the city where I play. Because I mean, at the end of the day, it was back to back to training. And, you know, for me, man, it was just like, I just knew, man, like I couldn't miss an opportunity to 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 train or find a way to get better or just to get back to here. Because like I said, this this place is, it's, it's always been special to me, will forever be special. I'd rather spend my time on campus 
on West End than probably anywhere in the world. Be honest with you. Mm. So, man, like, man. I mean, this, this, this. I mean, I don't know, man. I, I've, 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 I've grown, I've grown, man, to to love this city, mm -hmm. and not just this city, West End, that area right on that street over there. That's 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 my one of my favorite places in the world, man. Be honest. With you. Well, to be honest with you, that passion it shows. The people who interact with you, the people who hear and see you in the public eye, we see that, and that in and of itself just shows how much Vanderbilt needs to you and you mean to Vanderbilt. But I want to go back to that Super Bowl for just a second. How exhausted were you? Because I, I certainly was when James Harrison ran that interception all the way back and he fell out in the end zone. That was probably one of the most incredible plays in the Super Bowl, but you had to have been proud to watch him do that run. Oh, of course. So, you know, I'm a defensive guy now. So, like, every time a defensive guy get a chance to put his hand, hand on the football and, and score, man, I was, I'm was i all for it. You know, but the, 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 the cool thing about that was, like, um, I mean, like I said, I was just watching as a fan, you know, but, I mean, it's, uh, I mean, I, I, lo I love it, man. Like, I, I'm, 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 I'm pro defense, you know, so a little biased when it comes to that. But, no, that, 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 that was awesome. And, and it, another reason why it's, like, if you look at James, James Harrison, right, and I'm not saying my story is like his, right. but this is a guy that most people wrote off, mm -hmm. you know? So it's like, and this is a guy that said, okay, all right, let's go. Yeah. And that was, the, that was a cool part about it. So just to see him having that type of success where most people never thought he would be in that position, you know, and then they end up winning one. I mean, that was, that was, that was cool, man. You know? Well, I know you didn't feel sorry like I did for Larry Fitzgerald trying to bring him down. Me being an offensive guy, he got plowed. But I want to welcome Mark Matlock is with us. Of course, I've got Javon. Hey, we're just chopping it up a little. we got a few more minutes. Javon, what, what you, you've given us some of the background of your passion for the black and gold for Vanderbilt University. What most excites you about teaching and coaching these young athletes these days? Oh man, here's the thing. When you put an emphasis on like on a certain technique mm -hmm. and or a certain game or blitz pattern and to see it work, you know, um, it's, it's, it's awesome. I think this will probably sum it up the, uh, uh, the best. So we had a play, uh, Daniel Gaw is one of my players here, and we have this technique we use, and it, 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 it's just a technique we use where, mm -hmm. but um, he does it. And I get a text message in, 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 our, in our position chat, and he's like, Coach, hey, you got to see play 67. That's a masterpiece. That's it. That's what it's all about, and I said, "Yep, that that's that's when it that that's when it, it, you realize like when young men actually see mm -hmm. themselves having success, mm -hmm. and you actually see as a coach that what you're teaching they're getting, and it's it's mm -hmm. showing up. I think nothing is better, nothing's better than that because we're, we're we're we are teachers. I mean, we we are teachers in this thing, and as a teacher, you want to see your students." Right. As a, I'm talking about a teacher, teacher, you want to yeah. see your students have success, have A's, B's and things like that. So as a coach, as we teach it, we want to, you want to see your guys have success and also being able to recognize mm -hmm. when something that they have been taught works and it's like, Oh, coach, it does work. And it, it's fun to see that it is. That's awesome. This past year, you and coach black came down to Birmingham. We had an awesome lunch. And we started talking a little bit about how does the college coach deal with NIL and transfer portal when it comes to recruiting? We're a small private university and the best conference in the country competing against all these big state schools. And I know you have such passion to find those right guys for the team, for the roster, but how do you guys on the recruiting trail deal with the portal and deal with the NIL issue that's always hanging out there? Well, I mean, you know, as far as like the portal, they know who we are. We, we have graphics. We, we could back that up. 
that, um, you know, if we need to go in there, we will, but, you know, we're going to build this or development a program. Like I said earlier, we're going to, we're going to build this with high school young men at the end of the day. And it's our job to get them better and develop them and make them to good football players, right? Made them to better men, right? And also take care of the, the school as well. Like that's our job here at Vanderbilt. We're going to make sure you're, you're going to class. You're doing your work. I know what, I know every assignment my guys have, like this, this is how detail coach Lee has it. So like, yeah, you're, you're going to, you're going to do the right things. So as far as that, like, you know, we're just going to stand, we're going to stand on our record. We're, we're not going to, we're not going to move. Like you, you can research it yourself. You, we, we, we can't tell you one thing and then I will coach you guys are doing the opposite. No, it's right there for you. You know, so we're, we're proud of that. And as far as the NIL, like, I, I don't want to go too far into it, but like we're in the space, we are in the space. So this is, this is where we are in, 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 in college athletics. So we're in the space. So, that's another story for some other other people in this building, you know, but as a coach, like, like you read, you tell our guys, you can see what's going on out there. But at the end of the day, we're, we're going to find great athletes, fast athletes, long athletes, right. And real good football players. Well, I was going to say, and also probably with you interacting with them, you learn their personalities a little bit, but even with that, you learn their priorities. And if their priorities are not matching with what you're looking for, they may not be the right fit for the program. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, like I said, it, it, it's, it's part of recruiting. This is part of the process, mm -hmm. right? And it's not, I'm not saying anything um, that that's not already out there, but I think Coach Lee sums it up. Like he, he did a, I think he did a podcast or something a couple weeks ago. And he, he explained it. Whatever he says, this is who we are as far as it comes to NIL. And we're not, we're not afraid of it. Like it is what it is. Like our leader says, this is how we're going to operate. We're in the space. We won't leave with it. Right. But we're in the space. Right. We, 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 we want young men who want to come here to help us win an SEC championship. That's it. We, we want to win games. We're coming here to win games. We want young men who want to be part of that mission. And that mission coach Lee has said, it. we're building the best right football program in the nation. And I stand, I stand by that. Can't say it any better than that right there. Javon Hay, SEC legend, Commodore legend. Javon, thank you so much for spending time. I could I could talk with you for the next two hours, but I want to be respectful of your time and of our audience's time. And all I can say is just keep doing what you're doing because you make us so proud to all be Commodores. So thank you. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate you guys, man. And thanks for everything you do, man. Like I said, man, this 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 place is special. Um it, it, it's, uh, it's big things, big things are on the horizon, man. So you guys keep supporting. We're going to support you guys and, um, we'll get it done. We're going to get it done. Now, last thing, if we've got some alums who want to come work out you and with you and run the Hills and run the sand pits, what time do you go each day? Oh, uh, it all depends now, you know, it depends on what the schedule looked like, but normally it's, uh, we we have a good window, so maybe around eleven thirty ish. So, so let's yeah, go. let's go, let's go. Let's still get it in, man. Anchor down. Thank you, uh, Javon. Appreciate it. Uh, blessings be. Anchor down. <laughs>